Hello gorgeous people! Today I'm going to show you my mixed media project that I've created as part of the Summer Dreams YouTube Hop. And we had a colour palette to pick from and the theme for the project needed to be summery. And it took me a little while to find some inspiration that was really working for me. And finally, by accident, I happened upon the idea of replicating a Leonardo da Vinci sketch but with a summer kind of color palette. And this is what I'm gonna show you how to create today. I'm going to do a journal page, mixed media, of course, and I'm going to use some recycled packaging. I recently bought um, one of those nice smelly reed diffusers. This one's called Leonardo. And I just took one look at the beautiful packaging and knew I needed to use it. So the first thing I'm going to do is cut this box into pieces and glue it onto my journal page and that will form the base layout for my background. So, cut up the box, glue it down with some matte medium, and this is step one. Now, those two panels that I cut off are going to form the basis of my page, but I've also kept a few of these tiny little elements off the box. This one's just got the word Leonardo, and this one has a little bit about Leonardo da Vinci, and it's just kind of cool. I might use those, I might not. Starting with just golden regular gel. Move quickly because you're going to want to get these positioned while that uh, matte gel is still wet so that you can move things around if you need to. All right, so make sure everything's adhering properly. Once it's nice and flat, then add a coat of the matte gel over the top as well. But make sure you take it across the edges. Now the reason you want to take this off the edges is because you want the same surface to cover the whole page. You don't want bits of it to behave like paper and other bits to behave like it's coated. You want one surface across everything so that all subsequent layers, the paint or whatever product you add, will react the same way. So you don't want some of it soaking in and some of it uh, sitting on the surface. Um, while that is a nice technique to get um, some really cool variations in your artwork, it's not the look I'm going for today. Now, I love using this journal because of the fabulous um, rings. It means I can make it nice and chunky. I also hate using this journal because of those rings. <laughs> um, because it makes it really difficult to paint right up against the edge. In fact, quite often I cheat and I will create a page on a piece of paper and then stick it into the journal after I'm finished. Uh, but I'm not doing that today. Okay, that needs to completely dry before we can move on. For the next step, I have taped my page down to, or sort of taped it down to my desk, and I've grabbed a little bit of heavy gesso and a brush. I'm just going to dry brush some gesso over the background, um, and I'm doing this for two reasons. One, I know that I'm going to have an image on the background somewhere and that blue is way too uh, distracting, too bright. And second, um, it'll just help knock that back so I can add some other colours on top of it as well. Now, if you dry brush the entire thing, you can then use a baby wipe to take some of that gesso off. Um, so I'm just going to do this whole surface and then take some of the gesso away using the baby wipe. Add it more heavily in some areas than others and just cover all of it. Now having that matte medium on there first gives you a little bit more time because it will take the gesso a little bit longer to dry than normal. So you get a bit of extra time to muck around and uh, get things done. All right, so while the gesso is still wet, it's time to grab a baby wipe and wipe some of that off. For me, I'd like to emphasize the corners, but hide the fact that it's joined in the middle. Hello, my gorgeous sparkly friends. Um, my background is now dry and I've got some whitewashed gesso across the surface, which will give me a really nice um, front to work on. Now it won't be dark enough to pull off what I'm about to do. So I have a few more layers that I'm going to need to add before I can start my decorating. 
I love the fact that the baby wipe has allowed me to knock back some of the gesso and reveal some of the beautiful underlying elements here from the box that I've used, that recycled box. Um, and then adding the gesso down the middle has kind of made the join where I've put those two pieces together fade right into the background. Now, there is like a little lump here because I must not have um, lined up my bits of cardboard perfectly, but that's okay. So what I'm going to do now is use the regular gel, the matte regular gel, same stuff I've used to glue down the page, to do an image transfer. And I've just printed um, this gorgeous image from Leonardo da Vinci off the internet, and I believe it's just one of his uh, book pages in one of his journals. And this one is called Study for the Angel's Head from the painting The Virgin of the Rocks. Um, so this is just a printed image. So the first thing I'm going to do is tear this down to size because you don't want any extra paper to remove if you can get away with it. So tear as close to the image as you can without ripping the image itself. Often I do just want part of an image when doing an image transfer but not today. Today I want as close to the actual image as I can. tear reasonably carefully. You don't have to be super, super um, worried about it. Now the edge I don't want straight, so I'm going to tear that slightly askew. And I now have my torn image ready to use. So of course it won't be facing this direction. She will be facing this direction by the time I'm finished. Um, and I'm just going to place her so that the the face is kind of towards the middle of the page. So I can extend that shoulder down slightly um, and I want her about here. So I'm going to need to add some of this regular gel medium from Golden um, onto the surface here. But what I'm going to do is cover the whole thing uh, and that way it'll all be the same consistency, the same surface that I'm working on when I add additional colours. So I won't get anything acting weird. So I'm going to cover the whole background and then I will place my image down and burnish it with my fingers and then leave it to dry. And then I'm going to use a little bit of water spritzed over the top and then peel the paper very carefully off to reveal the image. Now as with all image transfers, this peeling process may require two or three different goes. So basically you peel the paper off, then let it dry. If the paper fibers aren't all gone, wet them again and then continue peeling off carefully with your fingers. If you rub too hard in any one spot, you can remove the image, but because I'm just using this as a guide, that won't be too much of a problem here if that happens. So let's get started. All right, so I've managed to rub off most of the paper fibers. I could do another round of rubbing, but this is fine for what I need it for. So now it's time to put some thought into the surrounding elements. What I'm going to do first is add some of the Stamperia rice papers. So I've got this gorgeous um, bit of text around the face here, which I will carefully cut out and add using the same regular matte gel that I've used already. And of course, then I've got some of these beautiful rose edges, which look like they're almost going to be made for the color scheme that I'm using here. So I'm going to cut those out as well. So I'll just go and snip all this apart and we'll come back and glue it onto the page. Now it's time to add just a bit more gesso to help blend that face into the background. Now the aim here is to leave enough of the sort of line work visible so that you can work over it, but cover enough of it so that you can paint over it without the sort of yucky grey showing through. And that's where the gesso base is finished. Now that that layer of gesso is dry and the image is sort of knocked back down quite a bit, um, I'm going to add some embossing powder. But uh, let me give you a close look at what's happened. So you can still see um, 
many of the sketch marks below the gesso but it has really helped sort of meld the two together. Um, I've also added some gesso over the paper that I've added here just to help again bring the background more together and where I've sort of continued the dress or shoulder portion here um, it really helps get that image sort of looking like it's uh, going to the bottom of the page even though it's completely different. So now I've got a gorgeous uh, rose stencil from Tim Holtz and I'm just going to use the Versamark ink pad to add a little bit of ink squashed through the stencil here um, and then I'm going to use this to add some embossing. Now I've got a beautiful uh, pink embossing powder from Lindy Stamp King and it is called Hibiscus Rose Orange um, and it's a beautiful pale pink so not only is it in the summer colours but it is also um, in the colours of the flowers I've got from the Stamperia paper. So I'm just going to add this using a little mini tool here and the nice thing about this is it doesn't actually have to be perfect in fact it'll probably be better if it's not because then it will look sort of distressed This has added a really pretty design element whilst still keeping the colour really subtle and soft but giving it something a little bit extra. It's opaque um, crackle texture paste um, and this one is from Ranger and I'm just going to use another Tim Holtz stencil. Now this will go over the top of some of those embossed images and help add an old world feel to things. Now apply this as thickly as you can through the stencil because the thicker it is, the better the cracker will be. Now you don't actually need a lot of crackle paste to add a little charm. So I'm only going to add one tiny bit more. Now that I know where those other elements needed to go, I can use the um, regular gel again to add some of the beautiful roses that I'd cut out from that Stamperia paper. Now I don't want to completely cover that gorgeous um, colour or the beautiful pattern underneath. So I'm just going to apply this quite carefully and maybe um, get it to wrinkle up a little bit so it sits exactly where I want it to rather than sitting flat which might sound silly but at least then I get the pattern and the image where I want it. Now be a bit careful here because you can really tear the paper quite easily. A little bit of the matte gel medium over the top of that tissue paper here. Alright, so I've got my page weighted down with some little jars of stuff. And I'm going to add the next wet element before the um, opaque crackle paste is dry. Just so I can leave it to like completely dry overnight. So what I've got is some beautiful colours from Lindy Stamp Gang um, in the summer colours that are called for for the hop. So I'm going to start with um, Wild Honeysuckle Coral and I'm just going to add this in little speckles. So basically just tapping it over the background here. Now I'm not too concerned where this goes because I've got that matte medium and the gesso over the image. You can use a baby wipe or a paper towel just to remove any of that colour from the image if you like. So that's the Wild Honeysuckle Coral. I also have Cafe Olay which is a beautiful soft brown tone. The Azure Sea Asters and Sailor Bee Cerise. Now I think the cerise is pretty close to the colour that's already on there from the packaging in the background that I started with. So I think this is a really pretty colour to add. 
Now because I've got matte medium down here it's beading up and it takes a little while to dry which also gives you a couple of options. So you can let it dry as these little spots. You don't need to do anything, just leave it. Uh, or you can smush the colour um, and by doing that you could either put another piece of paper over the background and squash it down and that spreads the colours out a little, also makes them um, a little bit uh, lighter. And that's what I'm going to do now. So I've just got a piece of scrap paper, not particularly absorbent. I'm just going to place it over the top and then squash it with my hand. And that will make all of those individual little colours spread out rather than stay spots. And you might need to do that more than once depending on the look you're going for. Because some things don't squash as readily as others because of the texture on the background. And of course if this is still too dark you can wipe a few individual bits off with paper towel. Um, and if it's still too dark then you can soften those colours even further just by adding some water over the top. Now keep that uh, water brush close at hand because now it's time to add a little bit more intense colour. So I have the Chateau Rose. It's a beautiful soft pink but it also has a little bit of um, chalkiness to it. Now I'm depressing the sprayer quite slowly here so I get splatters. Now if you don't want splatters or if you would like a finer um, look Spray much more quickly and spray across the page. Okay, now I don't want all of those splatters everywhere I've got them. So I'm just going to wipe some of those off with a paper towel. And the reason I can do that is because I've covered the entire back of that page with matte medium when we started. So that gives me a little bit of leeway with what I can do. So you can either take it all off or you can take off bits of it, blot it, make it look kind of chalky and messy along the edges there, which I really like. And I'm going to go back to that um, Sailor B Cerise. I'm just going to dot this on in a few places. Okay, here's where it gets dangerous. I've got two of Lindy's Starburst Squirts. I've got Poutine Gold and Canadian Bacon Blush. And I'm going to very carefully give these a shake and then drip them onto the design. Now you can leave these as really intense colour or you can spread them out with a water brush and I might do both. The squirts are a bit thicker than your average um, Lindy's spray, so it means you have both a bit more control over them um, and a bit more shimmer. I've really washed out the Canadian Bacon Blush and now I'm going to add some of the Poutine Gold. Now this is um, quite bright and quite brilliant and ideally you would add this once some of the other colours are dry, but I want this dry for tomorrow morning. So I'm going to add it now. Okay, and now because I don't want the full force of the poutine gold, it's really quite bright, I'm just going in with a paper towel and blotting some of that off. So what I'm hoping to get is a very summery um, shimmer, but nothing too crazy gold. Now I'm really loving some areas of this in particular because you've got the gold, the pink and the turquoise. It's looking amazing. I love the colour. Um, I think it's looking super summery. 
Now this hasn't dried yet, um, so I'm running a little risk here, but I think it's time to add a little bit of colour to the hair. And I've just got Jane Davenport's Birthday Suit Pastel Palettes. I'm going to start with these. Now I love these, especially over matte medium and things. Because you can make them as soft or as bold as you like, just by adding multiple layers. And then add some finishing touches with pencil afterwards if you want to. Kind of makes it easy to sort of really do beautiful flowy kind of designs, which I love, but really struggle to do with pencil. I tend to be a little bit heavy handed. And of course, because it's on matte medium, if you're not super fond of it, you can rub it out. So easy. It's super blendable. You can really mush the colours together and when you're applying it with one of these little uh, blend blending batons, batons um, you can really sort of scrub at it and soften it, get the edges really pretty and really work with it. I kind of love how, how they look really. And of course if you've gone um, too dark you can actually erase it, which is also really cool. And you can see that with what's really been a few quick swipes, I've been able to add a hint of hair. It's not particularly defined, it's quite um, soft, but I can go over that afterwards with some pencil and add a few um, additional darker elements. And that is just super pretty. I love the little tendrilly bits you can add. Now that's just two colours from the birthday suit that I've been using here. And I love, love, love how this looks. Alright, so sticking with the birthday suit, I'm going to add a base layer of face colour. And I'm just going to go with one of the sort of very pale peachy kind of ones. I'll have to see how this looks. I might end up having to go over with some acrylic paint. That grey might really um, bother me, but I don't know yet. So I'm just going to go over with this first. See if I can make it something I'm happy with or if I need to cover it up. So I'll to a darker colour. Now the wonderful thing about paint over, or I suppose this is still paint over, if you can see the lines underneath that the original artist has drawn, or the, the photo follows, you can kind of use those to add your colouring. Which is what I'm doing here. Okay, I'm just going to need to swap to another blending baton. This peachy colour. Just to pink up those cheeks a bit. And of course you can always use the clean side to um, take any of that colour off if it gets a bit too much. I'm just going to add some of that same colour to the lip. That might be something I have to do later. Hint of that pink into the shadow just so it doesn't look strange. But then I'm also going to add just a touch of purple. Now I've lost a little bit of um, definite in the hairline up here by working over it with the other colours, but I can put that back in. Swap back to one of these to blend the purple. Just add some hairline back in. I 
little bit of colour for the eyebrows. Alright, so I've got that gorgeous purple in there for the shadows. Just need to add a slightly darker kind of peachy colour in here. Or terracotta colour I should say. Just to help define the jawline, which I will then finish with some pencil. Alright, I'm reasonably happy with the um, the way that that face is going. I think I'm just taking colour off there. Alright, so she's looking really soft and really pretty. Um, quite subtle here. I really quite like the effect that that gives. It's really, really sort of shadowy. Alright, so the background is now dry and it is super gorgeous. I don't even know how to describe how happy I am with how this has turned out. The face and the hair are beautifully soft but seem to melt into the background. Um, the gorgeous crackle paste here really makes it look very old world but keeping in those fantastic summer colours and it is just super soft. The only thing I'm not happy with is the join down here but there's not a great deal I can do about that and with some old masters paintings um, there are cracks so I just have to live with that one. Um, now I would like to add some pencil marks over the top here just to help define some of these facial features and add some swirls to the hair but I know that if I do that over the pastel um, I could lose some of it so I'm going to uh, go and give this a quick shot of workable fixative before I continue. Before you do that you need to decide if there's anything you would like to highlight um, because once you've added the pastel fixative you can't remove anything that's here. So if you wanted to use your eraser to add um, little bits of highlights in the hair for example you could do that. I think I've already got uh, that you might like to do. Um, I added quite a bit of pastel over the nose just because I wanted it to be a little more subtle um, but you of course can remove that. Pretty much anything. Um, if you would like it lighter um, or would like to add colour with pencil rather than the pastel just go and erase a few little marks. So I'm going to go and take this outside and give it a quick squirt with pastel fixative um, and come back and finish it off. Alright, so while my um, fixative spray is drying on my image, I can go ahead and add some colour to some of the other elements that I'll be using. So I've just got a piece of uh, gauze here that I've taken apart with my fingers a little bit. And I'm going to cover it with the Flat Fabio Chateau Rose, just so it matches the other pinks in my project. And then I'm going to add in some of the Wild Honeysuckle Coral and finish with some of the Canadian Bacon Blush because I think that the um, combination of these three colours gave that gorgeous vintage rose pink um, because by itself the Chateau Rose is too sort of um, bright if that makes sense. Now the hardest thing is to put that aside and not keep playing with it which is often where I fail so I'm going to go and do that now. And now I've also got a tiny piece that I'm going to add some of that cerise colour to. So I have a C'est la vie cerise and I'm going to also add a tiny bit of Tainted Love Teal just to add a bit of um, dark to some areas. Alright so now that my um, gorgeous little bits of dyed um, material are all dry I'm going to stick them down onto my page. So I'm just going to use a little bit of glossy accents. I could use something matte but I kind of like how the glossy accents grabs. And then I've got my um, little piece of wording from the original box because of course this is an altered project. It's a it's an altered box really. Um, collaged, cut up, recycled, whatever you'd like to call it. It's all of those things. So I'm going to add a bit of the glossy accents to the back here, a bit more than I normally would, just so it sticks through all those layers. 
and then pop the word Leonardo here. Now I've made this match by just sort of squashing the word into the wet material while it was drying. Um, and that just adds a little bit of colour to it so it's not quite so white because, you know, the original box was quite white. So I have Leonardo sitting down here. And then, of course, I've got the other little bit that I cut off the box that's actually got a little bit about Leonardo da Vinci. And what I'm going to do is stick this on the reverse, on the facing page. So this is my artwork, but I'd like this to go with it. All right, so I just have to wait for that to dry and then I can do a few final tiny touches. Now I'm not going to do too much to it. I'm going to add a little bit of pencil work and perhaps a tiny hint of gold foil. So what I might do is just grab a glue pen and while this section down the bottom is drying, I'll add a tiny bit of glue and that way I can add the foil all together. All right, so I've got a glue pen here. So I'm just adding very scruffy amounts of this to the edges. I'm not even sure if it's going to work properly, to be honest. I'm not sure if glue pens are meant to go over mixed media backgrounds. Now ideally what I would get it to look like is a little gold thread running through her hair because that's all I really want. We'll see how that turns out. So that didn't quite work out the way I had thought, or more to the point, it did work out the way I had thought. But what I do have is something I quite like anyway, and it's extended the edges a little bit, just with a tiny bit of shimmer. So I have a few areas where those um, little glue strokes I did have caught, and it gets sort of this beautiful sort of metallic edge on things. It's not the um, thick gold I was thinking I might have, but it does help the old world master look. Now I could let that dry and do another layer um, but I kind of like just the way it is. The hair in particular has turned out more beautifully than I could have hoped and it just looks like there's this thin gold thread running through her hair and I really love that. So I'll leave the gold foiling there. It didn't work at all on the um, crackle paste. In fact what's happened is um, it's forced some of the crackle paste to fall off, which is not quite what I'd hoped, but sometimes you've got to try things to see what happens. Um, so don't try running a foiling pen over crackle paste. <laughs> Live and learn. So I'm going to use Jane's Magic Wand pencils for this last part, and just so I don't inadvertently get glue or anything on my image, I'm just going to put down a piece of paper towel as I work. So I'm going to start with the brown for the hair and I'll just add the darker sections first. Now I don't want to do much to it to be truthful because I like the way that it is sort of very airy and light. So I kind of want to leave it that way. I'm just going to try and keep it really loose. Tiny little bit of the turquoise around the eyes. And then add the pupils back in. And I'm also going to use some of this sand black just to help define that slightly. Now I really want to keep the sketch kind of quality. So whilst you might normally not use black as the outline, I really want to keep that sort of rough look to things, so today I am. Now I'm going to swap to a dark blue. And then a slightly darker brown. Now of course you can still see through to all of those colours I've got underneath. 
and I've already got the base of purple and a whole host of other yummy colours back there. I'm going to go over with more of a skin tone. And a little violet to the shadows. And then soften that back down. You can either use white or skin tone. I'm going to use both. Okay, I think that might almost be finished. Um, I think I might need to add a tiny bit more darkness in here. I'm just going to do that by adding a tiny bit of turquoise to some of these shadows. Why turquoise? Because it's a colour I have in the background. And I feel that sometimes it complements the image to stick to some of the same colours. It's not a lot of turquoise, it's just a hint. And you can go and tone that back down. Just using a skin tone pencil or another darker colour. Thank you, that turquoise is looking gorgeous. I'm just going to go over it again with a bit of black. Not everywhere. Alright, so I'm going to need to use a, a small white pen. And I'm going to call this finished. So just adding the pencil work on top has really helped brighten up um, that image and help add a bit of definition to some of those features that were very soft. And this is my final page. So you can see the touches of gold foil. I love the one through her hair. That's really making me very happy. Um, I've got the gorgeous texture paste, crackle paste up in each of the corners. Um, covered, of course, with the Lindy's colours, which is so pretty and so summery. That turquoise and pink looks amazing together. I've got some little floral elements down the bottom that have been added from the Stamperia rice papers. And you can see them on the side as well. You would never know that that background was a box to start with, um, except for the slight line down the middle where the two pieces join. Um, the turquoise, the pink, the hints of gold, uh, the soft, dreamy image all look stunning. Now, of course, that original image that I used from Leonardo da Vinci was quite soft because it was only a sketch. It was uh, a sketch for painting that he was working on. And of course, I wanted to keep that same softness in my image, which is why I've used the Jane Davenport um, pastel palette and then just gone over it with pencils. I wanted to keep it soft and pretty. And of course, I've extended the bodice, just adding a bit of collage um, to give her a bit of a base for this image here. I love everything about it. And I hope you've enjoyed watching how this came together. I'll be back soon with more and of course you can follow me and see more of my art, more of my pictures on Instagram uh, and Facebook. All of the links are at the bottom of this post. So join me and uh, follow along with what I'm doing. You might get some great ideas and techniques. And I would love it if you would subscribe to my channel and like this video if you enjoyed what I've done here. So bye!